It's Dan, and welcome back. Today we are ECN2 processing expired Kodak Vision 3 500T and 800T. With stills and movie film, silver halide crystals react to light photons during exposure. Motion picture film has a remjet layer that normal stills photography film does not. Remove this remjet layer and light can bounce off the camera back and expose the film too much, causing halation. The anti-halation layer absorbs the photons and prevents a halo effect on distinct light sources. You can see the effect on the left side which has no remjet which creates a reddish halo that the right side on motion picture film does not. To get started we will be bulk loading. This is how you roll your own film as opposed to buying cartridges in the store. Here's a bulk loader, it's a Lloyd's model with the directions on how many spins to wind your film in order to get 36, 24, 18 or 12 exposures on a roll. This is some film that was gifted to me. This is a reloadable film canister. You can see in the bottom there's a little hole where the winding device goes in to spin the film onto the reel. Taking off the cap, we can pull out the reel itself and we see that the canister is made out of three parts. There are two pieces of felt held together in order to not scratch the film as it moves through the canister and to keep light out. Here we screw on the lid of the canister just so that the little point is aligned with the opening for where the film will come out. You can see how the handle would lock into the canister. I won't be able to show you the actual winding as it needs to be done in complete darkness inside a changing bag. So here's my camera changing bag. It's completely light tight. No light gets in there. We insert the film that we'll be winding onto our reusable canister and take off the tape, find all this crappy friggin powder, and it's all over inside my changing bag! Well, film loading not going easy the first time. I don't want that dust in my bag because it's going to get all over the film before I wind it and it's going to cause me a lot of trouble and I will end up needing to clean my camera. So here I'm giving my bag and the tin a vacuum job. Skipping forward, the film has now been loaded onto the canister in complete darkness. So it's important to cut a little straight edge so that the film can load into the camera properly, but we need one more cut too. It's important to clip a small groove into the film on the opposite end from where the canister's protruding tip sticks out. I'm going to be testing this film, which is quite expired, using an x rite color checker. It's made for video, but it's a reference, and I think it will get the job done. I was bulk rolling some film for the first time ever and I just wanted to show a little bit of the silliness of my setup. I have a yellow Bristol board on the table. I got a GoPro anchored by some books. I got some speakers <laughs> that are holding it all up and a sock to hold it in place. You, know, you don't need all kinds of fancy equipment if you can get it done and have fun. Safety first, I will protect my eyes with some glasses and I'm going to wear some ratty clothes. I don't want chemicals on them. Last chance for a bit of coffee, we don't want to be drinking while we're developing. I'm using a Quiet We're Dreaming ECN2 film kit. It contains a pre-bath, a developer, bleach, and a fix. And white vinegar? I need white vinegar as well? What the heck? Okay, I better go for a walk. Really didn't want to go outside in these clothes, but I'm only going a couple blocks down the street to pick up some vinegar. So we're ready to start developing with the kit. Don't tell me, I need distilled water. Okay, so I'm going back out into town to pick up distilled water. I'm pouring the distilled water into a container with a sous vide which will control the temperature for me. I'm preheating the water to 100 degrees so that I can mix it with the chemical. While I'm waiting for the water to heat up, I will label the bottles that I'll use to store the chemicals. At this point I've shot my test rolls and I'm loading the film into a tank in which I'll pour the chemicals to develop. 
So I'm ready to develop with the ECN2 kit, which includes the pre-bath, the depth, the bleach, and the fixer. Starting with the pre-bath, I add 700 milliliters of water, pour in the contents of the package, and then add water to make up 1,000 milliliters. I use a plastic funnel to pour the chemicals into the containers, and as you can see, I'm very thorough with my labeling to make sure that I don't cross-contaminate my equipment. Here's an overhead view of the entire process. We start with the pre-bath, which removes the film's black remjet layer. The developer reacts with the film to release the color dyes within. Throughout processing, the temperature of the chemicals should be precisely controlled. The sous vide makes this possible, and I'll hold the development tank in the heated water while processing the film. The stop stops the developer reaction from overdeveloping the film. This is a mixture of four parts water to one part vinegar. The bleach removes the silver halide crystals from the film. It normalizes the contrast of the image on the film. The fixer removes all the unexposed silver halide crystals and also stabilizes the film to stop any chemical reactions from continuing. The rinse rinses away all the residual chemicals. So I use the rinse water to clean my equipment at the same time. This is a very water intensive process and as much as I can I'll try not to waste some. Photo flow is hydrophobic. We put the film in here to prevent water from staining the film once it dries. We don't want little droplets of water to rest on the film and leave a residue. We use our thumbs to remove the black remjet layer, and I didn't really see any left on this film when I was done, which was pleasant. I hang my film in a relatively dust-free environment. So why develop this film at home? 36 exposures is equal to 5 feet of film. 400 feet, contained in the roll of film that I received, is 80 rolls. An ECN2 processing kit will develop 16 rolls, and that costs $85 Canadian after tax. Having the lab process one roll of motion picture film costs about $34.50 Canadian after tax. Doing that same roll of film at home costs only $5.50 Canadian after tax. The difference in developing 80 rolls of each would be $2,760 getting it done at a lab versus $440 doing it at home. My scanning setup is in my bedroom, it's on my desk. I use a cell phone to backlight the film and I use a DSLR to scan the images using a film holder that I have from an enlarger, an analog film enlarger. I can get this scanning done real quick in less than five minutes per roll. Then I take the raw images into Darktable, which is a module of the open source software GIMP and I do my inversion and color correction to get a TIFF that I will transfer to Photoshop where I will do some retouches. The more expired the film, the more light it needs to record a proper image. I tested the film in sunny, cloudy, and studio flash lighting. I determined each film needs four times as much light as written on the box, or four stops over what the camera or light meter tells me I need. What that means is I rate a 500 speed film as a 25 speed film and an 800 speed film as a 50. The lower the ISO number, the more light is needed to expose an image. 